What's goody warriors? How you feeling? I hope you're good. I want to talk about video gaming, the gaming press, gaming audience, and how games are sold to the gaming us, me as well. If you look at the way they're selling games, for example, let's look at Wonderful 101. Platinum Games gave that game to the gaming press. They pull it out there. They slaughtered the game. It took like basically a few people but mainly a person called Soria to challenge these people and show them how fantastic the game was. Even a company like Platinum Games interviewed Soria Dash, who's a stylish action game expert and visionary in terms of video games and the way he wants video games to be. Because he, like me, wants the veil of deceit and lies to be lifted off video gaming. Platinum Games did an interview with him, a two-part interview that they put on their Facebook and on their Twitter, which got very, very, very positive responses. The people loved it because he's an ordinary guy with extraordinary dedication. It's all about the people, not about the gaming press. There are manipulators, deceivers, cheaters. They steal and they lie. All they do is manipulate just so that you can click on their website. It's all about revenue, ad revenue, and maximum CPM. YouTube is for CPM. The website is for all their money. In one week, they must get at least over 2 million people visiting their website. Don't you understand? That's money. When you see people like Konami, Sony, EA, Ubisoft, when you see banners, adverts, everything on their pages, they get paid for that. A lot of money. Look at the Super Bowl. How many hundreds of millions of people watch the Super Bowl? It costs like 47 to 70 million to advertise just for 30 seconds at the Super Bowl because of how many people is watching. The amount of value is based on its viewer counts and popularity because those are the people, amount of people you're selling a product to. If Advanced Warfare is being sold and they put it on a website, the website says we have such and such amount of people on our website today, this week, this month. Advertise, guaranteed your product will go out to at least 10 million people. So they'll pay them a certain amount of money and an extra bonus to sponsor to keep that one game advertised throughout the week or the month for as long as they want on every single page. So don't be surprised if these games get glowing reviews. This is the world in which we live. Games are not long, are no longer interpretations of somebody's experience, prolonged, in-depth, understanding, intellectual representation of what the game is. It is now an opinion of somebody's brief experience of a video game. So because they have to review 30 games by the end of the week, what they do? They can only allocate maybe 10 to 15 minutes game sometimes maybe even an hour if there's not many games out they don't have many games on their schedule to review then they can allocate a little bit more time but if it's a game that they're not used to can't understand it they won't understand it and they want to move on to the next game so from their limited and shallow understanding of the game they're going to put out a review for millions of people to read and be influenced by it because a lot of the readers are gullible or they just like the reviewer and they'll follow what that person says the person has got followers. Games are becoming undermined and cheated out of success because somebody doesn't understand it. And games that have got a figurehead or a powerful influence in the community is getting all the shine. They say video games is thriving. And you know, my, if you watch any of my other videos, I say video game is not thriving. If Capcom, look at the state of Capcom. They're not dying. They're no, they're no more broke than they were three or four months ago. All that happened with Capcom is just the shareholders don't believe in Capcom anymore. So now Capcom don't have a te te um, takeover defense. So technically, I don't know, Ubisoft... Oh, oh, I shudder. I shudder to think Ubisoft. Or EA. Disgusts me. But Ubisoft, worst case scenario, Ubisoft or EA, they could buy 50% of Capcom and then they basically can dictate the, ex the exclusive games in Capcom. Resident Evil, Street Fighter, all those type of games, they could dictate how those games are supposed to be made or come across. They have this, the choice. 
that is what the vulnerability Capcom is now. It's not the fact that they're broke now, they become boss. It's just the fact that the shareholders don't believe in them and they voted to take out the take the takeover defense. It's that simple. So now somebody can buy 51% a company or a person. Does this say to you video games are thriving? Yeah, because games like Grand Theft Auto made a, over a billion dollars. Does that mean it's the best game? Does it even mean that it's a good game? No, it doesn't. It just means that people got manipulated by pop culture to buy the game. Because people that bought the game then are not paying it now. They're not. A game like Watch Dogs, that game sold like five to six million. You got duped. The game is not even 15% of what the expectation is of that game because of what they said about the game, how they perceive the game in trailers, and also because of that E3 2012 trailer. Not even 15% who all got duped by Watch Dogs. But it's pop culture. At the end of the day, it's not... 80% is not gamers. It's all to do with pop culture. That's just the way it is. And casuals and people that just want to be with the herd. They just want to be a flop. That's not real gaming. When you look at people like Capcom recently, when they go to PAX, Comic-Con, E3, any type of trade show, Combo Feed is there, or Yoshi Uro Ono is there. They display the game properly. They invite some of the best players in the entire world to come to their tournaments or their events. Ryan Hart, Justin Wong, Ricky Orti, K. Brad, Smug, Sakunoko, Infiltration. The best players in the world that have dedicated their life to the game, they have those people play the game for the world to see. Because that's when the game is absolutely magical, absolutely incredible visually to watch and the mastery you're in awe and it makes you want to buy the game. Because those people are ordinary people that have just dedicated themselves. You could be the same. Look at the game at E3, Witcher 3, it was absolutely wonderful the way they showed that game. They had people that actually knew about the game, they spoke about the game. They spoke about the assets, they spoke about how everything was hand designed, weather cycles, Herald of Rivia, his swords, his signs, how the combat works, how the mission works, how the open world is, the stages, the locations, the visuals, the work that they put, the team, everything, they spoke about everything, the design, the mechanics of the system. I enjoyed it and they had somebody playing in the back who was actually a professional player who actually went in depth into the game and he was fighting like about three or four people, three or four enemies and if you play Witcher you know to fight three or four enemies at one time is tricky, it's very very hard. He was doing it which shows to me that that guy was a tester and he played the game properly, it's brilliant. There's nothing worse than having a bubbling buffoon demonstrate your game. Like what Batman was. Because I admit, yeah, Batman was incredible. It blew my socks off. Blew my socks off, but nobody was playing. And the people that were talking about it, that presented the game, I don't know, it just seemed like... I like more information when it comes to my games. The person that's talking to me about their game is knowledgeable. Not something that is a figurehead. You had the game as well. Far Cry, what did they show you? Nothing, except Pagan Min, the psychopath antagonist that will massacre his own people just to get a lollipop. But Far Cry 3 is always that, it's all about the antagonist, but in a nonchalant way of just killing people or doing something obscene. Far Cry, I understand, I understand. And I understand that, yeah, although a lot of E3 was a lot of CG, some people didn't have the games to show, but that was no excuse for people that did, and all they showed was cutscenes and movies and bring in celebrities that don't even know anything about the games or people to talk about the games that had nothing to do with gaming it was all, it's a lot of e3 to me seemed like a proper like a publicity stunt propaganda catering to pop culture that's all that's a lot of e3 seemed to me nintendo were brilliant at e3 because they focused on games and the creativity and to me when they showed the Nintendo show, it was just, they seemed like a bunch of people that were passionate about games, that had artistic flair, 
and had a vision that they wanted to put across. They spoke about their collaborations, their games, the system, the mechanics, the world and what they're trying to achieve in their games. I thought it was brilliant when they showed Zelda, Smash Brothers, Bayonetta 2, or oh, Bayonetta 2, Bayo, that's my baby. They showed all those games. It was and, and the way they spoke about the game, they knew what they were talking about. The technical questions, they answered them. I love that. I love that when they talk about the technical questions, that the person's not a figurehead, they're not a puppet. Same thing like Tecmo, they're displaying Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate. Now they're showing gameplay videos of godlike combo videos and they're addressing the community of people that play their games. This is how I think games should be sold from now on. They should not be given to the gaming press to show the game. You should have a representative that is in depth into the game to be there if it is there. And you should have the best trailers of the game being played beautifully and having people that have passion for the games and go in depth into the games, display the games and talk about the games. Not somebody that's going to allocate 20 minutes to the game and then not understand it and then slag it off. You are the most important ones in this whole picture. Not the CEOs, not the companies, not the corporations, not the gaming press, the people. Let's create an information hub of knowledge where we can tell and display what is good in the game and what isn't um, good in the game opposed to somebody else with a um, misguided representation directed only by money and greed and CPM and advertising that's not what we want we're gamers and as another thing with E3 nobody's going to get a pat on the back from me and say well done for focusing on games nobody because it's E3 it's supposed to be all about games that's by default if you deviate from that then for me blasting you are not paying attention to anything you've got to do because it's important that us the people take the conversation back we have the knowledge i'm not saying i'm the smartest guy because i'm not i know a little something and i'm sure you know a little something if we add that together we can make something powerful that's what i really really believe you know and we become a network of information ourselves not relying on some misguided manipulative um, individuals or corporation or set of a bunch of people to tell us what is good and what isn't good then that's how the absolutely magical gems get away and those games like modern warfare and uh, call of duty and fifa games all those type of games flourish while creative games with depth disappear into oblivion that's not the future you want you don't want a future where games, there's no creativity, no innovation, no beauty, no depth. Instead, it's replaced with simplistic movies where you bumble your way to the ending and then never play it again. With no, because there's no replay value because it's an interactive movie. If you want to do something, do something less genuine than like watching a movie. You know, because I believe games is all about learning, adapting being creative, increasing your reaction time. Your brain is like a muscle. If you don't work it, you get dumb. If you work, you get smarter. Have you ever played a video game where when you're playing it, something seems really fast. You say, how can I react to that? I've never been able to see that. Five hours later, that same thing is really slow now. You react to it all the time because your brain has adapted to it. You become smarter. You become more reaction to it. You know, say for like your fingers, your fingers become more, um, you get more dexterity in your fingers. Your reaction time goes up with audio cues and visual cues. You can recognise things with your hands, eyes, brain. Your reaction time goes up, your coordination goes up. That's what video games are. An exercise in creativity, adaptability, in awe of something that is making you smarter and enjoyment. Opposed to something that's rubbish movie that is just based on story i love story but i don't want to compromise story for game for gameplay and game mechanics i don't want to sacrifice that why can't we have both why can't we have both why does it have to be just a movie and brainless gameplay let's work together people let's make a better video game world a better video game industry where games are not built on a foundation of fraudulence but a, a foundation of legitimacy that is 
hard, impenetrable, and a proper information hub of people. Let's go. Sorry I went on and on and on. If you stuck through to the end to watch this video, thank you very much. I'll keep on doing these videos as long as you watch and as long as you support and I'm making a difference. I won't say any more. I'll say thank you for watching. Take care. Have fun. And let's do this thing. Let's take the conversation back. Okay, people. Take care. Eons ago I was ordained with the powers cosmic The invincible invader, no one can stop it I'm putting your planet on curfew Extra to rest when you write on my rhymes in the form of crop circles Discovered in the Arctic cold Laboratories explode for trying to clone my genetic home I'm a nightmare to all you cowards Arachnids bite me and detain radioactive superpowers Striking devils with God's hand Lynching them seeds from trees by their own DNA strands